Going to recap the first episode of Utopia. This is a new show on Amazon Prime. It is a remake of a British show, kind of a cult favorite show from 2013 that That's a right. lot of people thought didn't really get enough of a chance. Mm -hmm. uh, and now it's kind of flying under the radar on Amazon Prime. Is it? Yeah, not not seeing a whole lot of buzz about it. Okay. Uh, but I'm going to recap the first episode of that. I'm going to do my best anyway. Uh, you count me down. We're going to start you off to recap Utopia in three, two, one. One, go. Starts up with this couple. They're kind of going through a house which is full of all kinds of junk. They stumble onto a comic book and they check to see how much it's worth. It's incredibly rare. So they take it to a comic convention where they're going to let a bunch of people come see it and maybe buy it. It's in a hotel, like a big con. Uh, there's a bunch of like online like chat room friends who've come to kind of meet each other for the first time and come see the comic book. Meanwhile, uh, there's like kind of a mafioso nerd guy who's tracking down this comic book because maybe it has like superpowers or something. He kills basically everybody else who's come to the con except for our little foursome of friends who are, I guess, the good guys or the heroes. Um, does that kind of cover it? Did it oh, I also I didn't mention the kid. There's also a kid who seems to be like incredibly savvy. Yeah, the kid ends up stealing the comic book and um, called Utopia. And the whole idea behind Utopia is... There's a little bit of a connection between what's happening in the real world that people are gleaning from Utopia and these dystopia comics where they kind of feel like the author has kind of predicted certain elements like right certain pandemics like SARS and like that's right there is at the the beginnings of a pandemic starting in the background of the episode yeah. which is very prescient and kind of curious because I mean it's happening during COVID yeah and yes and we've we've continued watching we really like this show okay um so i give him my ass that's a early wow you really <laughs> we're, okay we're in there all right obviously because i've continued watching sure so um but rain wilson and john cusack are in like the rest of the series they're absent from the pilot i was waiting for them the whole time i know it's not weird they're all i knew about it in fact because of rain wilson i really thought this was going to be like a comedy okay. i thought it was going to be a pandemic comedy and it's really not a pandemic show yet, and it's not a comedy. No. I don't know if it really gets to pandemic levels. Okay. The whole thing is kind of like... But he plays like an, uh, a virologist or something. That's right. Yeah. And there's... I, at the end of the show, you know, there's this character, Jessica Hyde, where everyone's like, who's Jessica Hyde? She's the character from the book, but yeah. she's also a real person, and she shows up at the end. Yes. Yeah. And you don't know her to be a real person, mm. and you don't know Utopia to be, like, a, a real thing. So that's kind of a twist. Um. So, yeah, she does exist. And honestly, the first episode, there's a lot to digest, so I understand why they didn't. But a lot of the big twists and, uh, like, plot development come in the second episode. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good, because I a good I, setup. I it was very set up. -y. I found it really busy, to be honest. Yeah. And maybe it was just kind of disorienting because it wasn't at all what I thought it was. Right. Um, also, and maybe this is just a testament to how moving I found the Watchmen to be, or Watchmen, because you know how I couldn't stop thinking about Watchmen during Lovecraft Country. And yeah. That kind of ruined Lovecraft Country for me. I felt that way about Utopia as well. I was like, oh, it's it's a, about a prescient comic book that's actually, uh, and it's like a gritty kind of commentary on what our real life is like, but it just kind of felt a little more vapid to me. Very, very superficial interpretation of what like comic book conventions are and what like pop culture That's enthusiasts are. Um, the second episode does a lot to like throughout the, uh, yeah. I feel like that's kind of a, a bit of a, a setup. Like it's really, it's really juxtaposing right one it's kind of showing the dichotomy from what like the rest of the show actually will be do you have any curiosity to go back and watch the really popular 2013 version yeah i do i well that was kind of my suggestion for this podcast was to watch the 2013 pilot and you said that watch. to me i think i did early on i don't think i realized we... until today that it was a, a remake yeah yeah it was a and it was like insanely i i don't think you can find it anywhere because i don't think they wanted that ip getting to north america so I you see. can find it online well i think the remake or the american remake has been in limbo for a while because david fincher was attached to it for a long time it was going to oh. be an hbo show and it was going to star rooney mara uh, oh. and jason ritter like Ooh. it was maybe going to be of a higher caliber frankly yeah um and then that fell apart and now it's at amazon prime um 
I like John Cusack, though. I was disappointed that I didn't get to see him. What is your go-to John Cusack? I don't have a lot of go-to John Cusack. Interesting. Actually, to the extent that I, I oftentimes will unfortunately confuse him with Kevin Spacey. Like, oh. I know the actor to be John Cusack, but I'll be like, oh, no, it was when, like, Kevin Spacey's character and Jen's like, he's not Kevin Spacey. Like, oh, God, I know he's not. Ugh. They're not even in the same generation. Great. They're, like, probably at least 10 years no, apart. No, I know an embarrassingly small amount of, of John Cusack films. I, I've got... You know, I could rhyme off a, a lot, but the I think the only one that I've I can say for sure that I've seen is High Fidelity. You've seen high Fidelity. You've seen Say Anything? No, I haven't seen all of Say Anything. Oh man, you I haven't really see. seen Say Anything at all. You got to see Lloyd Dobler and Say Anything in your eyes. The light I see. Yeah, it's a great movie. It's one of the great love stories on screen. Is it? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why would you judge that? Everyone agrees. I don't know. I just feel like it's such a not like. It's a great script. Cameron Crowe. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I should watch it. But I don't know. It, I just feel like it's not quite like if people are talking about love stories, say anything isn't necessarily. Well, it's the not. First. It's not. Ju I mean, it is a great love story, but it's it's not just about that. It's not like Harry and Sally, the princess bride type love story. It's right. about like a kid. Right. Um, and it's got some darkness to it. Okay. But like if Cameron Crowe made. Jerry Maguire and Almost Famous. Oh, I believe that. Say should anything. Be good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a pretty good track record. Great track record. Fast Times, I think, right? We we're talking about the Fast Cameron Times. Crow did that's that? Cameron Crowe, yeah. Really? Yeah. Alexa, who directed Fast Times at Ridgemont High? Fast Times at Ridgemont High was directed by Amy Heckerling. Maybe Rick. directed by Alexa, who wrote the movie Fast Times at Ridgemont High? Fast Times at Ridgemont High was written by Cameron Crowe. Yeah, Cameron Crowe. Amy Cameron Crowe. Uh, Amy Herkeling also did Clueless. Oh. So she had a moment and then just kind of faded away. <laughs> what did you think of the 2020, people, man? The people in uh, in Utopia. The main gal who plays um, Sam, I think her name is, blonde. She yeah. is a perfect cross between Jodie Comer and yes, Melissa 100%. Benoist. Yeah, she's got mad Comer energy, but also Melissa Benoist, the Supergirl girl. I thought, I thought she was... Eve from Killing Eve. Yeah, she's too young. Yeah, I realized that as I was watching. But I asked Jen three times. And the kid's kind of it. interesting. The kid who like shows up. They've already sold the comic book to the penthouse. He lies to the hotel lady so he can get a, a card key into the penthouse. Yeah. And and he's lied to this entire group. Um, they all think he's an adult with a Porsche. It's not getting amazing reviews, to be honest. It's like really? kind of, it's kind of middling on Rotten Tomatoes, and oh. part of it is the protectiveness of the the, the, cult, the cult base. Of the I'm original. happy I didn't watch the original at all. Yeah, and so all those people got killed. All the people who got injected, the people who found the yeah. it's pretty gruesome at times. Right, they call it the harvest. Yeah. Killed well, I'm glad you liked it. I don't give a shit. I don't give it my ass. not even no. a bit. No. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm like, I'm on board with it. It's a, it's a bit of a big puzzle. And I kind of wonder if they've revealed too much too early on in the show. Okay. But the whole idea of them trying to figure out exactly what the comic is signaling and trying to figure out just Hyde's story, that's kind of where the, the show goes. Are you done? No, not quite. Okay. And how much is Rain Wilson in it? Quite a bit. Is Rain Wilson a one trick pony? Can he, it's, it's like Dwight, the great thing he does and everything else is just kind of weird and nothing. I don't think so. Okay. Um, I think he's good in this show actually. Okay. Like, and he's, he's, you know, he's different. How about Cusack? Cusack's really good. Oh yeah. Cusack's really good in this. I don't, and like, you can't really give away too no, that's, much. That's fine. But yeah. Don't spoil it for other people. Yeah. Although I'm not going to watch it. Yeah. He, it, he's a, a different kind of character in this show. Cusack made a cool movie that nobody's seen called Martian Child about 15 <laughs> yeah. years ago. He made this movie about like a guy who's like kind of alone in life, decides he wants to be a dad. And so he adopts this kid who genuinely believes he's from Mars. Okay. And so this kid's like seven. And so everyone just keeps telling him it's like a phase. And like throughout the movie, like this is not a phase. Like he kind of has to cope with the fact that this kid maybe is from mars and it's just like a beautiful story about like um being a misfit and being and, and feel like family and like finding your family right i recommend martian child although nobody talks about it now yeah I, I will watch that um yeah what other john cusack is there besides say anything <laughs> i'm actually genuinely uh, curious now say anything and high fidelity 
Well, he was in like weird science. He had like a bit of a John Hughes run, right? Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, like people like he's mentioned as an A-lister, but well, he's been pretty absent. That's kind of why that's what makes this show notable, although he's done no press for it. Right. He's never done a TV show and he doesn't do movies. He's he very care. he's a big burner. He's a like a big uh um loves Bernie Sanders. Oh, is he? Oh yeah. Okay. Very outspoken in that way. I like John Cusack. Although, you know, I'm drawing a blank on, on his like big movies. I'm sure there's one that people are screaming at their, their phones right now. Like, how can you not be saying this movie? John Cusack. Not the, so much of a hot shot. The Sure Thing. He made a movie called The Sure Thing in the 80s. I have it on DVD somewhere. Okay. So yeah. more of like an 80s, early 90s thing. <laughs> You're okay just now is really like, all right, let's move on. <laughs> You're not just going to okay. list the... John Cusack, not a big deal. All right, he's fine. <laughs>